Hello friends this is an informational video channel that gives you timely information also subscribe to get timely information today I will tell you 10 fun events in cricket history that you will enjoy listening to and watching. So let's go to the video war used to be fairly simple. There was a campaign, the armies fought each other, and the country that lost gave up. The average person on the street barely knew that a war was going on. But then the 19th century rolled around, and bam! We had total war, as a result, entire countries, not just armies, were legitimate targets. World War II was a total war, so navies thought nothing of attacking ships carrying food even if the food was destined for civilians. The goal was to starve the enemy, disrupting public life and damaging the country as much as possible. Number 5 Eggless Mayonnaise Mayonnaise is the most popular condiment in the U.S., appearing on tables more than any other sauce, including tomato ketchup. It is the savior of bland cheese sandwiches and green salads as well as the base for lots more exciting sauces, like tartar sauce. In the 1940s, mayonnaise was just as popular as it is today. So, when people ran out of eggs, it's no wonder that they simply made mayonnaise without, but what could replicate the strong flavor and silky texture that makes us love mayo so much? Well, potato was the best they had. And while it certainly didn't taste the same, it could still make a smooth sauce with a couple of additions. Oil and fat were needed. Some people used vegetable oil if they could get it, but national margarine, the replacement for butter, was their only option a lot of the time. 6. Once they had the smooth potato, some strong flavors like vinegar and mustard could turn a bland sauce into something that would work as long as they didn't expect it to taste like mayonnaise. Number 4 Carrots Carrots received a lot of attention from the British government during the war. At the time, it was common knowledge in both Britain and Germany that carrots were good for your eye health. When the British government started fitting some of its planes with a brand new AI targeting system, they covered it up by saying that their pilots were eating enough carrots to improve their night vision. The AI was used mostly at night. This was to throw off German intelligence and keep the British AI a secret. But it also filtered down to the British public, who duly began eating and growing tons of carrots. The government turned this new love of the carrot to their advantage, drafting a Disney animator to design a whole family of cartoon carrots to put on leaflets. The public was encouraged to grow carrots and use them in government provided recipes, including carrot cake, carrot cookies, carrot pudding, and carrot marmalade. Naturally, some of these recipes worked better than others most people learned to avoid the really bad ones but the strategy worked. As carrots are a naturally sweet vegetable, they were a fine way to increase the sweetness of a pudding without having to dip into the extremely precious sugar ration. Carrot cake survived the war, remaining a popular British dessert to this day. Number 3 Powdered egg chickens were difficult to keep during wartime, so the average Brit was only allowed a single egg a week as part of his ration. Vegetarians received more eggs, but they got no meat allowance. People were encouraged to raise their own chickens. If they did, their egg rations were replaced by chicken feed and they could have their chickens' eggs free of ration. Of course, not everyone had the space or time to start a small chicken farm. For those individuals, powdered egg was brought in from America. This was just dehydrated egg, which was much easier and cheaper to transport. The downside, the public hated it. An energetic government campaign tried to convince people that dried egg powder was really just as good as a normal egg after water was added, but people couldn't get used to the strange texture. This powdered egg was put to use in cakes, custards, and omelets. But for years, the traditional fried egg on toast snack was nothing but a dream for many Brits. Number 2 Kraft Mac and Cheese Kraft Mac and Cheese aka Kraft Dinner is a staple of the North American diet today. Whether that's a good thing or not is your own opinion. But back in the 1940s, it was an important food for the average American or Canadian family struggling through the years of food rationing. Despite its wartime success, Kraft Dinner was actually made to help the public during the Great Depression when people needed high-calorie foods for as little money as possible. 
It first hit the shelves in 1937, though its creators could not have foreseen how popular their product would be during the coming war. In a time when most foodstuffs were hard to come by, a single ration stamp could get you two boxes of Kraft dinner. Along with the product's long shelf life, this made it invaluable and very popular. An estimated 50 million boxes were sold over the course of the war, launching Kraft to the top of the American food chain. So much of the stuff is eaten in Canada today that it has been labeled as Canada's unofficial national dish. Traditionally made mac and cheese disappeared from American plates almost entirely. Even today, homemade mac and cheese is a much rarer dinner in the States in comparison to Europe, which is a testament to Kraft's dubious legacy. Number one spam It was a British tradition that the main meal of the day contained one meat and two veg. The wartime population tried to follow this as closely as they could, but meat quickly became hard to find. Under pressure, the British government started importing other meats from across the world with varying degrees of success. Some, like corned beef, were barely tolerated. Others, like the snowick, a species of snake mackerel from South Africa, were shunned entirely because they were just too different for the British palate. But one of the meat products, a canned ham from the U.S. called Spam, proved to be very popular. Spam certainly wasn't as good as fresh meat, but it was filling and tasty, by substitution standards. It was also popular with the U.S. Army, which relied on Spam for its long shelf life. While it's not as popular today, Spam was a staple in both countries for decades after the war. Billions of cans were sold in the 20th century. Please like, share, and subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching this informational video.